forecast first on Color 10 News, Ozarks First. Cold, cloudy, and quiet out there right now, but looking at a chance for some snow, mainly tomorrow morning to our north. Areas near North of Highway 54, winter weather advisory does remain in effect. That's for Wednesday through midnight Wednesday night. On radar right now, we're beginning to see the precipitation starting to spread in from the south. Temperatures generally in the 30s across the area, but they're not going to drop a whole lot more from there. In fact, it looks like temperatures in most cases will stay a little bit above freezing overnight. Here's a look at our forecast here in Springfield. Rain all day long. It's going to be cold too with temperatures slowly rising through the 30s. Have that umbrella handy all day. Uh, be prepared for the uh, roads to to be wet, not only for the morning drive in to work, but also that afternoon drive home. And maybe tomorrow night a little bit of snow impacting the area. Arctic Air follows that on Thursday. More on this coming up in your forecast. Color 10 News at 10 starts now. Now from Ozarks first. You're watching Color 10 News at 10. Just three years ago, the Nixa Fire Protection District hired its first female firefighter, but tonight she is suing the department. Dana Osborne alleges several forms of sexual harassment in the workplace, as well as other forms of mistreatment. Tonight, new at 10, Color 10's Jesse Inman spoke with her attorney today to get a better understanding of what the accusations are all about. Jesse, what'd you learn? Well, Osborne's attorney says that her client has made numerous complaints in the past couple of years that have fallen on deaf ears, which have led now to a more formal complaint. And Osborne is suing six total parties in this case. She's suing the fire department as a whole, as well as its board of directors. In addition to that, Osborne alleges the captain is the main perpetrator of these acts and also holds the chief responsible, as well as two other firefighters. Now, as far as what some of these instances included, Osborne, Osborne alleges that she received pictures of her co-workers' genitals. Uh, those were unsolicited. And she claims that they watched porn as, at work as well. Osborne says that she was cr critiqued on a different basis than her male coworkers as well. Now, this was filed last week, but Osborne's attorney says that she actually still works there, as do those named in the suit. And her attorney says that it's been an odd experience for her client. At work, they mostly just give her the cold shoulder. They ostracize her. I think the ball's in Nix's court right now to make sure that she's able to fulfill her job and and continue to work while this is going on and that they protect her and do something about this behavior uh, so far after this complaint's been filed nothing's changed now a couple of other things here i asked if osborne asked her attorney rather if osborne had ever had a romantic relationship with anyone on staff there she said that Nobody that was named on the lawsuit, but didn't expand further than that. I also made attempts to reach out to the fire department for comment. Now, the city of Nixa's public information officer told me that the fire department is a separate entity from the city run by their own board of directors. So I reached out to the fire department's information officer as well as the chief himself. None of my calls or voicemails were returned tonight, but we'll continue to work on this story. Of course, uh, folks, uh, keep in mind, if you want to read the full details of this lawsuit, they'll, they can be found on OzarksFirst.com. Jesse Inman tonight. Turning to political coverage here at 10, changes to the Clean Missouri Amendment are one step closer to being on the ballot again. I did my job in the Senate, and now it'll be up to, how, to the House to to move through you know, the process that they see fit. Republican lawmakers at the state capitol want to change how political districts are drawn even after voters approved Clean Missouri back in 2018. The state Senate pushed a bill with changes to redistricting to the House yesterday. Color 10's Madison Heber has been following this story for us. Madison, what can voters expect if this resolution passes? Yeah, David, it would get rid of a nonpartisan demographer and instead rely on current bipartisan commissions in both the House and Senate to draw the lines themselves. Republicans say they're doing this to prevent the state demographer from drawing district lines that favor Democrats. Democrats say Republicans are attempting to overturn the will of the voters. The redrawing of district lines happens every 10 years after the census is completed, so voters in certain areas can better be represented by their elected officials. Yesterday, Republican State Senator Lincoln Huff voted against his own party. He says he would rather wait for the already voter-approved Amendment 1 to play itself out instead of trying to fix something that hasn't happened yet. I hope that no matter what happens with this, that communities of like interest and like size are kept intact, no matter how these maps are drawn, because uh, to me, that's the most important thing is making sure the voters feel 
accurately represented by members of the House and the Senate. And what I always like to remind my colleagues is at the end of the day, if you think you're doing the right thing for your constituents, I don't think anyone can argue with you. Democrat State Representative Crystal Quaid praised Huff yesterday for voting against the resolution, saying, quote, I'm thankful he's listening to his constituents. Now the resolution will play out in the House, and if it passes all avenues, it'll end up on a ballot for you to vote on once again. All right, Madison Heaver with the follow-up for us tonight. Thank you. Happening right now, a close battle in the race for the Democratic presidential candidate. About 84% of the votes have been counted in New Hampshire's primary. And here's a look at the current standings. Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders has a small lead over former Mayor Pete Buttigieg and Senator Amy Klobuchar. On the Republican side there in New Hampshire, President Trump already declared the winner tonight. 86% of the votes there in his favor. Candidates are now going to move on to Nevada, which hosts its caucus next Saturday, February the 22nd. Back here at home, we're putting crime in focus now at 10. A Greene County man is behind bars tonight after he was allegedly caught in the act of abusing a child. The news leader reports 29-year-old John Huff is charged now with first-degree statutory rape. Authorities say a woman says she walked in on Huff sexually abusing a girl younger than the age of 12 last Saturday at a home in the county. The girl told an interviewer at the Child Advocacy Center that uh, Huff has been sexually abusing her since she was in the first grade. Huff refused to answer questions when he was arrested at the scene over the weekend. After almost a year of construction, a new jail is ready to house the influx of inmates in Douglas County. Color 10's Francis Lynn toured the new 12,000 square foot facility today that can now hold 48 inmates, and she shows us tonight the upgrades at this new jail. The design of this new jail in Douglas County allows jailers to operate with little to no contact with inmates, increasing the safety of everyone. The dispatch and the jailer can control this facility 100% from sitting up there in the dispatch area. The jail has a total of four pods. Some pods like this one with a more open dormitory style house people who committed nonviolent crimes. And other pods include a more secure lockup for people who are accused of more serious crimes. We don't hold that many violent offenders. If it's maximum security, they could spend up to 23 hours a day in here. There are even smaller cells that hold only two people. Our violent offenders, we want to try to keep more in a lockdown environment. Just having this capability to segregate somebody from the group uh, will alleviate a lot of problems. And there's also a room specifically designed for people who want to hurt themselves. Because there's nothing in here. Right. Okay. Right. And these are pads. Wow. Yes. It's very soft. Yeah. They're monitored by the camera 24-7. Almost everything in this new jail is controlled through computers, something that was not an option at their current facility. Jailers are calling archaic. We're about as anxious, ancient as we could be in the current jail. <laughs> these doors here were specifically designed in between pods to where we can push a button and it opens these doors up. It's easy. You hit, you touch it, unlock. My jailers carry a wand. They walk up here, they touch it. It automatically records date, time, who did it everything. There are also two phones inmates can use. One of them has video capabilities. It serves a, a lot of purposes. They have to sign off that they've read our jail rules. All this to eliminate face-to-face -face interactions between officers and inmates. About a half a day on Saturday, a half a day on Sunday dealing with visits that we're not going to have to do now. And I wouldn't want to walk back there every day and be, as soon as I open up the door, be faced with eight guys that are being held in, a, in an old uh, dilapid jail. Francis Lynn Ozarks first. Sheriff DeGase, by the way, is also planning on renovations now to another 20 bedroom within the facility to help house inmates from other counties. There will be another tour available to the public coming up after February 15th. Just a reminder that tomorrow is Abraham Lincoln Day, which is a state holiday for Missouri. That means most state offices and county courthouses will be closed. The Missouri legislature will be in session, though. Lincoln Day is not a federal holiday, so banks and the post office will remain open. Well, in Ozark, the Fasco Water Tower it was demolished today. It's located at Highway 65 in Jackson. You don't see this every day. Take a look. And the city says that tower would have uh, needed a paint job inside and out. That could have cost about half a million dollars. And this uh, tower you're seeing there on the ground only served about 30 customers, believe it or not. 
The water tower near Walmart in Ozark is also going to be demolished soon. No date set on that demolition. The city says the Walmart water tower is too short to be useful and the site has no well. Bitter cold is making a comeback over the next couple of days. Jamie, it's also bringing some rain, even snow with it. Yeah, tomorrow's just going to be cold and wet, but there could be a little snow in the Springfield area and other parts of the Ozarks tomorrow night, followed by a big blast of Arctic air. But like we've seen all winter long, the Arctic air doesn't stick around very long, and we've got a warming trend to look forward to this weekend. More on the temperature roller coaster ride in your forecast next. Now, weather with Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. Well, last night at this time, we were watching the snow come down and cover the landscape in a winter wonderland. Now, here at the TV station, by this point, we had picked up about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half of snowfall. Of course, that quickly transitioned over to some rain by about 11 o'clock, and then it was just slushy outside. The snow that we had out there overnight last night melted quickly this morning, and uh, we're now looking at just bare ground conditions. 34 is where temperatures stand, and overnight tonight, at least for uh, probably about the next five, six hours, we're just going to have cloudy, cold, and dry conditions. But you can see precipitation starting to sneak in from the south. Now, the leading edge of this isn't actually reaching the surface, but once you get into areas like Fort Smith, they're reporting light rain. We're finding that down toward Little Rock as well, and that precipitation will be expanding north throughout the remainder of the night tonight. Let's take you hour by hour through this pattern because it's a little tricky. Um, the easy part of this is, is that it's going to be a cold rain for most of us. The tricky part is where is the snow going to set up and persist long enough so that we can get some accumulations? And right now it looks like that's going to be favored in areas north of Highway 54. So start you off at 10 o'clock. Again, pretty quiet most of the night. But by 7 o'clock in the morning, we are going to find rain over most of southern Missouri and northern Arkansas. And on the northern edge of this, there's likely going to period, be a brief period where we have a light wintry mix of rain, sleet or snow and there could be a few pockets in here where temperatures are right around freezing and it could be freezing rain. This won't last long. Impacts will be, you know, next to nothing and then it quickly changes over to rain. Now further north as this precipitation builds, especially in the west central Missouri, we get a more steady period of snow going and it looks like we may be looking at light to moderate snow in these areas. This is noon. But as warmer air continues to gradually build north, we switch that over to rain as well. So that by mid to late afternoon, all of the area is looking at either very light rain or drizzle. 
Then overnight Wednesday night, here comes the snow again as the atmosphere cools. We'll find that area of snow building back toward the southeast and we could find snow sneaking back into areas along the interstate by midnight and even south of the interstate. I think there may be a period of of snow showers or flurries, uh, especially as some Arctic air surges into the area. In terms of snowfall, uh, it looks like for tomorrow morning, it's going to be primarily north of Highway 54 and then again overnight Wednesday night we could see a dusting with the light snow that moves through and that will impact more of the area, probably all the way down to maybe near the state line. Uh, the morning snow tomorrow looks uh, like it will accumulate on the order of maybe one to as much as two inches. Uh, looks like that one inch line is going to be from about Osceola through Warsaw, over toward Versailles and Eldon. Uh, south of there, it quickly drops off to maybe half an inch in Hermitage, Camdenton, Lake Ozark. And then to the north of there, once you get up to Sedalia, uh, probably amounts around two inches. And then up near I-70, two to four inches. Road conditions, where we get snow tomorrow morning, they could become snow covered or slushy, but I think for the afternoon hours, we're just gonna find wet or slushy conditions in those areas. But with the, the cold air coming in Wednesday night and also a little bit of light snow, we could see slick road conditions developing again and uh, if impacting maybe more of the area. Rainfall, it's going to be another good soaking. A quarter to half an inch north of the interstate, south of the interstate, a half inch to an inch. In fact, we do have a flood watch in areas like West Plains, Alton, and Eminence. Uh, where it looks like we could see rainfall totals of around an inch and that could lead to some some flooding of area creeks and low lying areas. Very cold day follows on Thursday that comes with sunshine and then we see a warming trend on Friday after morning lows in the mid teens high of 41 and then we're back in the 50s over the weekend. And I think we could see highs maybe near 60 on Sunday and in the low 60s on Monday. Relief inside. Yeah. Okay, what's our viewers club number tonight? Number is 133-122 and our jackpot is $700. All right, Jimmy, thanks. An unbreakable bond coming up between a sick veteran and his dog. They are just great friends, the best of friends, and love each other's company. Coming up next, how these two reunited in Arkansas. Also ahead, would you pay $1,000 for a pizza? Better be tasty, right? After the break, what makes this Valentine's Day gift so special?
want to bring you some more local news now. At 10, a Missouri sheriff wants tougher penalties for people who run from law enforcement. Cass County Sheriff Jeff Weber says one of his deputies just returned to work this week after being injured in a high speed chase last fall that ended in a crash. The suspect in that chase had a lengthy criminal history, including multiple cases of fleeing from authorities. Right now in Missouri, as long as there's no physical injury or death, chase suspects are often charged with a misdemeanor and they can be out of jail within hours. What we deal with every day now in, in our communities is um, an emboldened, brazen criminal who feels that uh, there's not going to be any punishment if they're caught. Sheriff Weber was at the Missouri State Capitol today testifying to make running from the law a felony regardless of whether authorities and other drivers in the path escape without getting hurt. An Army veteran and POW during the Korean War was laid to rest with military honors today. Walter Dixon was actually considered dead nearly 70 years ago. In 1951, Dixon's family got a letter from President Truman saying he had died. That wasn't the case. He went on to live until he was 91 years old. Dixon's children say their father used his past to be a better parent and taught them lessons they'll never forget. Whenever we would say something negative, he said, no, son, that's, that's negative. Think positive. And he taught us a lot how to, how to survive, too. He taught us gardening. He taught us how to fish and hunt. And taught us a lot. He was one of my mentors. Working hard, um, not giving up, finding the good in things. Uh, and not letting stress get to you, trying to find a way forward. Dixon's family says he never stopped serving. He was also committed to helping veterans. Well, here's a story coming up right now that proves dogs are really man's best friend. The man only identified as Mike is battling cancer in hospice care at the Fayetteville, Arkansas Veterans Center. And when Mike came to the VA, he had one thing missing from his new home his beloved dog, Tucker, who had to be put in the pound. But over the past month, a local group saw a social media post and started bringing Tucker in for regular visits. The great thing about the volunteers bringing Mike's dog here to visit with him is he gets a little piece of home, a little piece of the joy of home here in his new home. There's just so much, you know, healing that can take place, seeing your pet and uh, petting your animal when, when you're in the hospital. Tucker's a bit old himself and also sick too. He's being treated right now for ear infections that we are told should clear up soon. A local animal shelter already has dozens of offers to find a foster home for Tucker in the meantime. Well, are you looking to spice up your Valentine's Day? Why not try a $1,000 gold crusted pizza? Yeah, you heard that right. Eureka's Pizza's Valentine's Day pizza starts at one grand. It comes topped with 24 karat gold crusted Kobe beef, champagne and Madagascar vanilla poached lobster. Rolf Wilkin owns Eureka Pizza. He says with these ingredients, this pizza will take your love to the next level. It's unique. It's outrageous. It's loving. It'll make your significant other feel, I mean, they'll feel the love. <laughs> Due to the exotic nature of the ingredients, pizza orders must be placed 48 hours in advance. It'll also take your bank account to a different <laughs> level, too, <laughs> yeah. of all the things to spend money right on. Right to your wow. Coming up in sports. Hey, every loss is tough. I mean, you know, every loss makes me sick physically. Well, Dana Ford needs a break. Dan Lucy's coming up in sports with that and Cardinals spring training news up next.
Now Sports with Dan Lucy. The Missouri State Bears will hit the JQH Arena hardwood tomorrow night, hoping to bounce back from Saturday night's heartbreaking loss to Southern Illinois. The Salukis had the ball under their own basket with less than two seconds left in the game. It was thrown the length of the court. Marcus Damas then would hit a game winner at the buzzer. Tomorrow night, the Bears will play a Drake team that beat them by just two points in late January. Kendra Cook's game winner rimmed out in Des Moines. Missouri State has lost four of its last five. Our, our entire team was, was down. I mean, I, I hadn't seen, you know, that amount of emotion in a locker room since St. Louis last year. Every loss is tough. I mean, you know, every loss makes me sick physically. Um, but we're right, we're right where we would be if we're anywhere else. The next game is the biggest game. Yeah, you, know, you got to kind of take care of your business, and then the next game will be bigger than the one that we just played. The Drury men's and women's basketball teams will travel to the Kansas City area this week. Drury will play at Rockhurst on Thursday, and then at William Jewell on Saturday. The new Division II women's coaches poll was released today, and the Drury Lady Panthers remain the number one team in the country. This marks the 12th straight week that the Lady Panthers have been number one. Drury is 23-0 this season and has picked up 18 first-place votes. It's the 107th consecutive week that the Drury women's team has been in the top 25. This is what the top five looks like this week. Of course, Drury number one with those 18 first place vo votes. Ashland is in second place with five first place votes. Texas A&M Commerce is third, then Indiana out of Pennsylvania four. Lee Tennessee moved up into the top five there. Mizzou Tigers on the road tonight going to number 25 LSU. A Tiger fight in Baton Rouge. Mizzou showing off early. Xavier Pinson with the dish to trade Jackson for the dunk. It was 6-4 Mizzou early. Tigers would carry that lead into the second half up 45-43. Reed Nico with the block. Hands off to Drew Smith. He feeds cross court to Pinson for the slam dunk. Mizzou staying in front, but not for long. Five minutes left. Darius Days, three gives LSU its first lead since they were up 2-1. And the Bayou Bengals rally for an 82-78 win. Mizzou goes away empty-handed. Arkansas Razorbacks also on the road tonight. In Rocky Top facing Tennessee, trying to snap a two-game losing skid. Santiago Vescovi had other plans, knocking down this deep three. Balls up 21-11. Hogs respond behind Mason Jones. This triple would keep Arkansas within a dozen. Razorbacks, though, with just 23 first-half points, fewest of the season. Second half, not much better. Vescovi again, open three, 51-33. Volunteers win, 82-61. After a 12-1 start, Arkansas has lost six of its last eight. Boys high school basketball tonight. Glendale at Parkview, these two meeting for the 140th time in their history. When you've got a six-foot-seven guy in the middle, just throw it into Trayvon Brazil. Easy two, it was 5-5. Five, five. Glendale building an early lead. The Falcons swinging it around to Carter Lowry for the triple. It was 10-5 Glendale. Parkview answers with Anthony Green, his three-pointer. And the Vikings were in front 13-12. End of the first quarter, the Falcons, Jackson Osborne down the lane and the floater. Glendale up by four, but Parkview was just too strong late, winning this one 71-51. And the National League Central champion St. Louis Cardinals officially opened up spring training camp in Jupiter this morning. It was the day that pitchers and catchers were required to report to camp. Of course, a number of position players are also there, not supposed to be there until Sunday. Also in camp, 30 reporters and TV camera operators from Korea. They're documenting every move that Kwang Hyung Kim makes. He is the Cardinals' big free agent signing this offseason. K.K. Kim, the left-handed pitcher, got a two-year, $8 million deal in December. It's uh, just it's catch ball today, and uh, he was in Vero Beach for a week, and in Vero Beach he did catch, and then catch ball and the bullpen. So today it's uh, first day here, so it was uh, like a light uh, you know, training day for him. Catch ball, that's what the Royals are going to do in Arizona tomorrow. That's sports, the news will be right back.
Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. News will continue in a moment. We are out of time. Thanks for joining us. You're always online at OzarksFirst.com. See you tomorrow.